folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making an old-fashioned hamburger casserole. Okay, the basic ingredients for this casserole are a pound of ground beef and you could substitute chicken or something else, turkey, even if you wanted something other than beef in your recipe. A cup of chopped onions, and about four cups of diced potatoes. You can use any potato you want, and salt and pepper to taste. Now, this is a very, very basic recipe. The only other thing that you have to have in this is about a cup of liquid. Um, you can use plain water if you would like. I'm gonna add a little bit extra to mine. Um, I just like a little something extra added to it. It is good though, plain, with just these ingredients and a cup of water or a cup of milk, whichever you prefer. Um, I'm gonna add a cup of chopped peppers to mine, just green bell peppers, and a cup of milk, not a cup of water. And I have about a teaspoon of cornstarch here. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to um, thicken the base in my casserole. The starch from the potatoes will thicken it some, but I like mine just a little bit thicker than what the potatoes make it. And I'm going to add some provolone cheese to mine. I'm just using slices. You can use any kind of cheese you like or no cheese at all. Um, if you did a cheddar cheese, it would kind of give it a Mexican food flavor. You could even add some hot peppers to it or some taco seasoning or some other kind of hot pepper. And that would give it like a Mexican food flavor. You can just do, um, leave out the peppers and do American cheese. Kids love it that way. Um, literally, the add-ins are limitless. But I'm going to show you some tricks um, to cook this and get it done really fast if you want to or to be able to do a little bit of cooking and then just throw it in the oven and forget about it for about an hour. And depending on the weather and how much time you've got, you're going to want to make it different ways. So let's take some of this over to the stove and start. Okay, we're going to brown our ground beef and our onions and our peppers on about medium heat. So just go ahead and dump that in the pan there all at once. Okay, if you have an oven safe pan um, this is a one pot meal because you can brown your ground beef and your vegetables in this pan and then put it right in the oven. Um, a cast iron skillet works great for this. If you've got cast iron skillets, just start it in a cast iron skillet and then pop it in the oven. This one um, with a metal handle, it's a porcelain coated nonstick pan, but it is oven safe up to 500 degrees, I think. So this pan here will go straight in the oven and there's no mess to clean up. It's just all in the one pan. Okay, the salt and the pepper is just to taste. Uh, so you do however much you like. I like quite a bit of salt and quite a bit of pepper. And I'm gonna season it a little bit again when I add my potatoes. Now, I'm using um, ground round in this, which is um, 8515. It's pretty lean. Uh, and I like the leaner meats for stuff like casseroles and uh, meatloaf and things like that because you don't have to drain the fat if you don't want to. And in this casserole, you're not going to want to drain the fat because the fat is actually what seasons it. Now, if you're using a really fatty um, ground beef, like the 70-30 stuff, you may want to drain some of the grease off of it after your meat starts to cook so that your finished casserole is not too greasy. Don't drain all of it and don't wait until your peppers and onions are completely cooked to drain it 
because you'll lose all your flavor from your peppers and your onions too. And in fact, if you were using something like a 70-30 ground beef, you might want to even start cooking it and get your meat about halfway cooked and then drain it. Then add your peppers and your onions and finish cooking it. Okay, as you're cooking your meat and your vegetables, you do want to stir it um, and bust your meat up really good. You really can't get it too fine. Um, if you like really big chunks in it though, I suppose you could not bust it up quite as much. But I think it's better if the chunks of meat are busted up really small, um, maybe about the consistency that you would do in Sloppy Joe's or something even. And a lot of casserole recipes call for sliced potatoes. You can slice your potatoes and put in here if you want to, but the diced potatoes, that's a trick that I learned from my Aunt Dot. Um, I talked about her in another video. If you dice the potatoes, they get done a little bit quicker and the flavors blend together better. Um, than the sliced potatoes do and it's also a little easier to eat it because you're not dealing with the little pieces of meat and the big slices of potato. Um, if you put cheese on the top of it, you know, the cheese kind of goes down in the casserole a little bit and you get the flavor down in it more than if you have the sliced potatoes that really can't be penetrated by the cheese. It all just sits on top. Okay, now you can keep cooking this until your meat gets really, really brown, but if you're in a hurry, like those week nights when you run the kids everywhere and they've done after school activities and then you've took them to youth group at church and you're getting home late and you're trying to get it done quick, as soon as your meat gets pretty gray where it's busted apart and not sticking together anymore, go ahead and dump your potatoes in there and start cooking them. Now, if you're not in a hurry, at this point, you can mix this up, add your liquid, top it with your cheese, and put it in your oven. If you put it in the oven at this point, though, with the potatoes raw, you're going to have to bake it for about an hour. Now, right now, it is hot outside, and I really don't want to have my oven on for an hour. Uh, even though it's middle of September, we're in a heat wave, and it's been like 95 every day. So if you put the potatoes in it now and you start cooking them on top of the stove, you can cook them on top of the stove for about 10 or 15 minutes, then add it to the oven and only cook it for about 15 more minutes until your cheese gets brown and that cuts your total cooking time in half. And your, your house doesn't heat up because you've had the oven on for an hour and a half. So if you want to start your potatoes on top of the stove, just mix them in a little bit. Um, you might want to add a little more salt and pepper at this point. And when we have this for dinner, um, if we have it this time of year when tomatoes and cucumbers are still in season or we're making it, you know, in the spring or something, we'll just have some uh, cucumbers and tomatoes with it chunked up. Sometimes we'll have a salad with it. You could do fruit with it, just whatever's in season. And like I said, the pepper isn't really necessary. If it's the middle of winter and you're wanting to make this, or if you just don't have a pepper, because in the middle of winter, a bell pepper in the grocery store will cost you $3 for a pepper. And you don't want to add that pepper because you don't have any in the freezer, or you want to make it and you just don't happen to have a pepper, you haven't been out the grocery store, you don't have to have a pepper. Um, it is an add-on. Okay, now to start cooking the potatoes on top of the stove or cook them on top of the stove. Like I said, at this point we could dump in our milk and top it with our cheese and put it in the oven and it would take about an hour. But if you want to save yourself 30 minutes, put the lid on your pan and let those potatoes sit on top of the stove and cook for about 15 minutes and they'll get soft and then all you have to do is put it in the oven and brown it. Okay, um, our potatoes are about soft so I'm going to show you how to put the rest of this casserole together.
Now, you can see in here that it's almost completely covered with liquid. And in this pan, I may not be able to quite add my whole cup of milk. Um, usually I can, usually I don't have that much liquid. But where I started cooking it on top of the stove with a lid on it. But it's retained a lot of the moisture, so you might not get this whole cup in here. If we don't, that's okay. You just want to make sure everything is covered. Yep, I'm going to stop right there. I don't want it to boil over in my oven. Now, once you get your vegetables all covered with your liquid, and like I said, you don't have to add that cornstarch in there. If you do add the cornstarch, though, add it to the milk or your water before you dump it in your casserole. And give it another little stir. And then if you want cheese, go ahead and top it with cheese. And like I said, you can use um, slices, you can use shredded cheese, or you can use no cheese. You can use any flavor you like. Um, I'm using this provolone because it kind of gives it a flavor like cheesesteak, and I really like that flavor. And whatever kind of cheese you use, you just lay it all over the top and coat the top really well with it. And you can add as much cheese as you want to. Um, I'm probably adding about four ounces of cheese. Brett's not crazy about cheese. He likes a little bit, but not a lot in his food. If it was up to me, I'd put about a pound of cheese in it. But I'm not the only one eating it, so I'm going to put about four ounces or so on here. And that will give it a nice flavor. Even four ounces is enough to give it a really nice flavor, and it's going to brown really nice on top and make it pretty. And all you do at this point is put it in a 350 degree oven if you cook the potatoes on the stove, seriously, about 15 minutes. If you added everything and didn't start your potatoes on top of the stove, you just dumped them in there and dumped in your milk and stuff, topped it with your cheese, it's going to take 45 minutes to an hour depending on how big your potatoes are. And in about 15 minutes, that's what you have. And you can, if you don't have an oven safe pan, like um, an iron skillet or one of the porcelain coated ones with the metal handle, you can dump it in a casserole dish. You don't have to make it in the pan that you fry your hamburger and stuff in. But why not make it in a pan that you fry your hamburger and stuff in? <laughs> I mean, less mess is best. This hamburger casserole is a really easy one pot dish and you can make it start to finish in about 45 minutes um, on a school night or a work night when you don't have much time or you can stick it in the oven and bake it kind of slow on a cold winter day. It smells wonderful and the smell absolutely fills the whole house. And all you need to go with it is maybe a slice of bread and some kind of fresh vegetable or fruit. Like I said, just the cucumbers and the tomatoes are what we usually have with it. Sometimes we'll do a little salad. But give this a try and make it your own thing. You know, add whatever flavor cheese you like or whatever vegetables you like. You could add carrots to it, peas, um, corn, whatever you want, really, you can put in here. I just kind of wanted to give you the basic ingredients and the basic casserole because a lot of people have commented and said that everybody tries to do these complicated recipes that you have to have a million ingredients for and you can never cook supper with the recipes. Well, this is a recipe that you can make no matter what you got in your fridge because you can put whatever you want in it. But we really do appreciate you joining us in the Hillbilly Kitchen. We appreciate all the comments and all the likes and all the shares. If you haven't already, um, subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe before you leave and we'll see y'all next time. Remember until then to put God first.